We are continuing our journey through problem 628. We've just done the high-low method. We're going to use that same data set and we're going to do the scatter graph method. With the high-low method, we highlighted the two points and we said based on these two points of data, let's estimate our cost formula for our line. The scatter graph method, we actually use more data to estimate our cost formula. I'm going to just clean this up and I'm going to copy down this table just so I have it close at hand as I want to chart this. Now you're going to want to have either a piece of graph paper or just sort of simulate a piece of graph paper on your own lined paper. So I've got a nice, it's easy for me on a computer to get one of these things, but I got a nice little graph paper there. Let's, there we go. We got our numbers handy. So we got to make a chart, a table here. And, uh, I'm going to, my, my cost here is, goes up to 1500. I, I have 20, the, this is 20 by 20 graph paper. I'm going to just make every line 100, 100, 200, 300, 400. Now you'll notice, even though this thing doesn't start till 1100, I didn't make this like 1100, 1200, 1300. I started at one and in fact, this is zero. Everything's to scale, right? I'm not missing anything on my scale. I find students make mistakes when they sort of skip or condense their scale. Everything's to scale here. I much prefer graphs that look like this way in real life. I find things can get hidden in the scales and it can lead to confusion. And that's not what we want to do when we show a graph. 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 13, 14, and 1500. And of course, that's our y axis, and y is cost. I can stop at 15. We could go up to 20, but we know 1500 is all we're going to use. Um, this one goes up to 130. Let's just make these 10s 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, uh, 130. 140 and 150. Okay, so we've got our scale. We didn't use everything. And this is activity. And that's our X. And in this case, it's packages shipped. Okay, so we've got ourselves uh, a nice chart. Now, scatter graph just says we want to use every piece of data, plot your points, right? Just put the points on the chart. Okay, so January 100, 1200, so 100, uh, 1200 is all the way up here. I'm going to put a little dot there. 120, 1300, 120, 1300, that goes there. 125, 1350, oh, we're in between points, but that's fine. 125, 1350, right about there, I'm not far off. 130, 1500, 130, 1500. Okay, it's getting a little bit awkward here. 110, 1400, 110, where's the 1400? Okie dokie. And last, 90 and 1190 and 1100. There we go. Huh, a little bit awkward, but my goal here now is to draw a line that goes through this. Now, I have to look at the shape of this and say, what's the rough shape of this? And it's a little bit difficult. We're not drawing a connect the dots. I got this point that seems a little high and these two that seem a little low. So I'm going to draw something that goes right in between them and hope that it, uh, you know, reasonably, we call this a visual inspection line or a line of best fit. I'm going to try to draw a line that best fits this data. Right? Yeah, I don't even know. Oh, I'll try there. Okay. So I've sort of placed my ruler down. Let me get some green ink here and let's draw. Okay, so that's my best guess for a line of visual inspection. Now, when we've drawn our line, there's a couple of really important points to uh, highlight here. The first important point is right here. It's the intercept. Remember y equals mx plus b. Well, this is our b, so it's between three and 400. I'm going to say it's 330. That's our fixed cost. That's our B. And I'm getting this by my eyeballs. I'm just looking and kind of guesstimating, estimating where it is. If we had, you know, millimeter <laughs> graph paper, you could figure it out more exactly. The next step is to pick a point that we feel like our line went through. And if, if our line didn't touch any point, the one that was closest to where our line went through. And this seems to be the closest one for me. Now, 
again, it's not perfect. It's not quite through it. I know this was 1200, 100, and our line clearly would go over 1200, 100, but this is good enough, 1200, 100. So again, our X here is 1200. Our Y here, did I screw that up? I said that backwards. Our X here was 100, and our Y here was 1200. Uh, okay, so we have our point, uh, and it was uh, this one, it was January. Okay, so I've solved for B. I want the formula for a line though, Y equals MX plus B. I have my B, my B is 330. I actually have my Y and my X just right there, 1200, 100. So I know 1200 equals M times 100 plus B. Uh, let's take away 330 from each side, 1200 minus 330 equals 100 M. 1200 minus 330 is 870 equals 100 M. Working backwards, I find M equals 1.7, uh, 1 8.7. So just divided each side by 100. Okay, M equals 8.7. I know B equals 330. My formula for the line is Y equals uh, 8.7X plus 330. How does that compare to my high-low method? My high-low method said Y equals 10X plus 200. So we're pretty far apart. I wonder, out loud here, I wonder what... Uh, a more accurate estimate would give us. I wonder if I ran these numbers through a computer, what the computer would tell me. Well, that's what the least squares regression method will have us do. You can do a least squares regression by hand. I think the math goes beyond the scope of an intro accounting class. It's just, it's not even that hard. It's very time intensive to do a least squares regression. So we're gonna set Excel loose and we're gonna tell Excel to do a least squares regression and it'll give us the best data for our line. And again, remember what it's all about, variable and fixed cost. Once we know our variable and fixed cost, we can do very, very useful things. But in our next video, we'll do a least squares regression using Excel. Okay, that's all for this video. See you in the next one.